Good morning, lovely people. How are you all today? I hope you're well. Yeah, I'm back in the garden. I haven't been in the garden for eight days. Crazy. So some of the videos you've seen in the intervening eight days, they were filmed a week or more ago. Um, because of the crazy weather we've been having. So today, it's a really, really quick visit. I'm not planning on particularly doing much work today, but I just wanted to come down post-storm to check to see if there's any damage, any cleaning up I need to do. And as soon as I've got here, first thing was like, where is my compost bin lid? Hmm. Now my compost bin lid goes on with a kind of really firm click. So my goodness, those gusts uh, must have been really strong to have taken it flying. Fortunately, my neighbour, a couple of pops over, as I was walking into my pop just now, went, where's my compost bin lid? And she stood up and she went, is this it? <laughs> it was found on her plot, so I've got that back. So yeah, this weather thing we've had, um, you know, it's funny, isn't it? A month ago, in the middle of February, God, it seems really dark in here, come on sunshine, a month ago, the middle of February, there I was doing the herb bed and doing all sorts of little tinkery jobs and it was this beautiful, warm, calm weather. Um, and I'm really, really glad I made the most of it to get loads of little odds and sods of jobs done, excuse me a sec, because it's nearly always the case in the UK. But we go into March and then we, we usually get some kind of curveball weather thrown at us. So last year it was the beast from the east with the dumping of snow. So basically in the last two weeks we've had two big storms. We had Storm Freya. She only hung around for a couple of days or so. And then before, I'll talk about the next one in a second, before the next one came in, we had a couple of days which were a little bit calmer, but still quite windy. So the last couple of times you saw me in the garden, doing videos in the garden, that was those couple of days between. Because then we got Storm Gareth. Storm Gareth has just hung around like the worst kind of fart you can imagine. Hung around for days and days and days on end. I think it's been around for about a week now. So the main thing is really, really high winds gusting sort of 50, 60 miles an hour. Um, and then just randomly, boom, a massive dumping of rain. It stops, the sky brightens, but the wind's still howling and you think, oh, I could get to the garden maybe. And then boom, another dump of rain. So, it's really unusual for me to be away from the garden for eight, I think it's eight days, eight days at this time of year. It's crazy bonkers. You know, it's okay. I've done loads of work at home indoors, caught up with a few things, so it's fine. But it does now mean that, so for instance, I didn't get my spud trenches ready last week. So this week coming, hopefully, <laughs> this, this wind has just... I hope it's gone and it looks, there's a couple of showery days ahead, but it looks for the most part like we should be dry enough as well to get onto the soil and do some work. Yay! So, yes, planus interruptus by windus. <laughs> I think, um, I think let's go and have a quick look around the garden, see, see if there's any other damage that I haven't spotted yet. And also let's just go and have a look to see what might be coming up. I need my glasses for this. Hopefully a few things have come up in my absence. Oh, and I need to check on the broad beans. Do you remember that video I did? I must have filmed it 10 or more days ago after Freya. And I thought it was safe to take the covers off the broad beans and I wanted to, to let the bees get into the flowers. And I was thinking, oh, we're not due anymore. Wind, they should be okay. So they've had a battering. I haven't even looked at them yet. Come on, let's go and have a look at them together. Put your wellies on. It's a bit soggy underfoot. <laughs> well, I was about to show you something 
but a certain somebody is asking for attention first. Hello, mate. Oh, I've missed you this last week. We'll have a cuddle in a minute. Oh, and there's Rosie too. Yes, I've missed you too, Rosie. What I have noticed is my daffs, uh, not my daffs, my tulips are up. But look, what a shame. It's right, right on, oh, sorry, rusty not the camera. It's right on the sign. So uh, what I'll probably do is when it's over, I'll hoik it out and I'll just bring it a bit further forward. But that one is worse. Getting ready to burst. And that one, oh, I'm so happy to have a few tulips in my garden as a first. Check. Oh, the wind's still Let's go and check on the broad beans. And then I think we'd better have a cuddle, hadn't we, boy? Hmm? You're looking in the direction of the shed as if to say, come on, let's get in there and get cuddling and snuggling in a minute. Ah, oh, just before I get to the broad beans, uh, my slug trap is full of leaves, obviously, and not slugs. So, rather stupidly, I made it up with cold water and of course that didn't activate the yeast so note to self I will be repeating the exercise but I'll be doing with warm water next time in order to activate the yeast. These brassicas are starting to go to flower. I'm going to leave these now. I might have some of the leaves away for me to eat but where they're flowering I'm going to leave them. Actually look you can see the kale's flowering as well. I'm going to leave all of that though for the bees. Like I say, I'll, I'll keep taking the leaves, but I'm going to leave them in for now. I'm not in any hurry for these beds. This is all going to be the squash, which won't be going in until, oh gosh, end of May. So, yeah, leaving it for the bees. It's rather pretty, isn't it? Okay, broad beans. Rosie, get out of me broad beans. <laughs> okay, so, ah, oh, look, this is from my neighbour's garden. Let's just pop that back. They use um, bits of old Christmas tree to mulch the raspberries. Ah, let's have a look. Well, they're still standing. Thank goodness. And a few more flowers coming in there. Oh, thank, thank goodness for that. Absolutely zero signs of the ones I did as a sort of a late spring sowing. I don't know if that seed wasn't viable, but never mind, there's enough in here for me to get my chops around. <clears throat> and this is a problem I have every year. <laughs> you see this? This is a raspberry runner that's come from this plant here. My neighbours didn't plant this, but it's just worth bearing in mind because <clears throat> you can see how narrow the path is. It's only sort of 24 inches or so. So this plant, goes under the path and comes up in my bed here every year and every year I try and dig it out if you are planting raspberries or anything yeah yeah raspberries sorry my tongue's in a twist if you're planting things like raspberries please 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 keep them away from your boundaries because they will otherwise end up in your neighbour plots and it's just really annoying having to dig it out every year oh and I'm delighted that just shows what robust little plants are, doesn't it? You know, they stand up to the cold and they've stood up to some really fierce winds. Look, these flowers are just so pretty. It is something I talk about quite often, is that thing of take the time to actually look at the flowers on your veg as well. I know we want them for their veg. Oh, little wiggle in the wind. I know we want them for their veg but we can appreciate their flowers and their flower buds as well. Look, that's so delicate. It's like someone's come along with the finest paintbrush to paint those little stripes on. Oh, bending over. <laughs> oh, well, that's good. And I don't think by the looks of it, there's anything wrong anywhere else. Um, most of the cardboard has been gradually disintegrating over the winter but I think some of it has maybe blown around a bit so what I'll do I'll just go and have a quick scoot around neighbouring plots because I'm sure they don't want my scratchy old cardboard in their garden so I'll just go and have a, 
a bit of a look round and a tidy up because I don't want to annoy my neighbours. Purple sprouting broccoli, that's stood up to the winds as well and needs harvesting. My goodness me, it needs harvesting. Oh, that's supper tonight. Oh, bird feeders need filling. Oh, let's see how this, uh, the sweet peas have got on in my week of absence. Oh yeah, they look great. Actually, some of them will soon be at the pinching out stage. My saladings, they're, they're fine. Oh, that's a happy sight, isn't it? I think I'm probably gonna have to water them because it, it does, when I put my hand in, it does feel warm in there. And they do look a little bit dry. So yeah, get them watered, but they're fine. How did the rhubarb get on in this storms? Oh, looking absolutely fine and splendid. Little baby, <laughs> yay! Oh, soon everything will be coming back to life properly. Actually, all the ones that I pruned are starting to green up again. Wonderful. Ah, yeah, sweet corn's gone flying. That's to be expected, but just look at this tansy. This was the one I pruned oh, uh, four weeks ago. Look how much life it's putting out already. That gorgeous. And that's the um, fever for you behind it. What a beautiful, beautiful bit of really bright green at this time of year. Oh, and what about that little knob? The little knob. Oh, look. Oh, I'm so pleased about that. That must be the Sweet Sicily. Still no sign of the lovage. Oh, but that makes me happy. Brilliant, 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 brilliant. So it looks like after this storm, I've got off incredibly lightly. Um, oh, thank goodness. So quick bit of a tidy up now for the last half an hour or so. Um, I think I've gathered all my bits and pieces that have blown elsewhere. Like I so, said, it's just a quick, quick visit to just check to make sure everything's okay and to come and have cuddles. I now have cats in the shed with me, of course. Um, and I just want to say, my goodness, I've seen loads of pictures this week of folks' polytunnels which have been ripped to shreds. Not just ripped to shreds, but the whole structure buckled. And greenhouses, my goodness. I mean, it's one thing to lose panes of glass from the greenhouse. You know, it's not nice, but they can be replaced. But I've seen pictures of greenhouses where they're just utterly squished and mangled and they're just not going to be mendable, fixable. So I'm really, really sorry for everybody out there who is now facing the prospect right at the beginning of the growing season of having to replace their greenhouses and polytunnels. Ugh, heartbreaking. Oh. So, um, yeah, heartfelt sympathies. Right, now the other thing I want to do today is um, blow my nose. Either, this is either the cats or the, the wind has done it to me. Hang on. <coughs> so I've just been tagged in a video by Jazz over at Allotment Small Holding. Not Allotment. Sorry, Jazz. Alternative Small Holding. <laughs> the wind has fizzed my brain. And I am to name my top five seeds, plants, that I grow. Um, and then I'm going to tag three more people to do likewise. So, now it's interesting when she tagged me, I was watching her video and I was thinking, well the first couple, no-brainers, really obvious. But then it's quite, in some ways it's kind of difficult to narrow it down. But I have narrowed it down. So... My number one top seed to grow. My number one top plant to grow. Oh, these aren't in any order. I thought I'd got this fixed in my mind. Um, excuse the barking. <laughs> it's, a, it's friendly, but there's a couple of dogs on site today. I digressed so much then. Right, yes, number one, not in any particular order, beans. But which bean in particular? <laughs> It's a toss-up between Gigantis and Coco de Pampol. Coco de Pampol. So, hmm, 
The great thing about the Gigantes is they're climbing beans so they don't take up so much space and the Coco de Pampol is a bush bean so it takes up more space but the yield of the Coco de Coco de, 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 Coco de Pampol is higher than the Gigantes per plant. Is it? Maybe it's about the same. Look, I can't decide between the two, but beans, definitely my number one seed to grow. Hugely important part of my diet. Really easy to grow, really easy to store, really versatile to cook with. Absolute brilliant thing for me to grow. And I'm just trying to think, you know, last year everything was a bit tricky because of the drought, so I'm not really going to base any of my sort of thinking and planning on last year because it was such an odd year. But I would say, in general, in the last five or six years, I've never had issues with growing beans. So their ease of growing makes them go on my top five list as well. Number two, <sighs> tomatoes. I couldn't imagine my garden without tomatoes. Setting aside at the moment them as a food, I love all the tinker time with tomatoes over the course of the summer. Because I grow cordon ones, that means they need some tying in, they need their side shoots nipping out. They're such a hands-on plant for me in the garden. They're, they're pretty much the most hands-on, most cared for crop that I grow and you might think well all that fussing and faffing but I love it because every time I'm touching the plants and that smell is released I'm I'm taken back to my childhood to my memories of my grandparents and my granddad in particular so it's always always a joy for me to handle the tomatoes so from a from a sort of a spiritual soulful point of view they're right up there on that list too but of course as a food brilliant um, I use tomatoes in so much of what I cook as a base so my top choice for tomatoes I'm sure you all know this by now is gardener's delight it's a cherry tomato um, I can't actually show you a seed packet because a the seeds are at home and b they're not in a fancy packet they're just in one of my saved packets because I saved my own seed so I'm just giving Rusty a cuddle you all right buddy oh <laughs> that was I'm just gonna let him out hang on a tick go on then out you go oh in or out Rusty <laughs> hang on a second oh dear I've just got the door shut because um, there's people right outside my shed chatting it's lovely but too noisy. Yes, so with the tomatoes, my absolute number one tomato to grow is the Gardener's Delight. Like I say, it's a cherry, but they come up as quite a big cherry tomato. They're beautiful raw, whole, as they are. They bottle, they store really well because they're a slightly higher acid tomato than many others. So they're a good one for safe storage. The yield is fantastic. I mean, it gets to the stage every year, every sort of September when I think, ah, oh, when is this tomato harvest going to be over? I'm sick of bottling. <laughs> and then blight comes and I go, yay, no more tomato bottling. Um, but yes, so great taste, high yield, etc., etc. Brilliant. Um, hang on a tick. Sorry about that, <laughs> getting distracted because there's almost a party going on outside my shed. It's absolutely lovely. It's lovely, there's so many folk around today, it's wonderful. Anyway, where did I get to? So yes, beans, tomatoes, <coughs> specifically the Gigantes and Coco de Pampol. That's two for the price of one. Gardener's Delight as the tomato. My third choice is squash and, hmm, Am I going to name an individual variety? I grow so many different types, but squash has to be on my list as well. And again, it's for many of the same reasons. It'll be interesting to see what other people say when they do their own five um, top five videos, because 
obviously mine is all based around growing as much of my own food as possible this is as near as I can get to self-sufficiency with a small amount of land in London and obviously other folk are just growing for pleasure so all of my choices are to do with good yield good sort of pest disease resistance um, and ease of storage so squash are right up there too I get a great amount of squash for my little space they store so easily without the use of electricity they just store as they are they're a fantastically versatile veg and yeah I pretty much use them I would say I, I use one big squash every single week in so many different ways I can't imagine being without them as for choosing one particular variety that's really hard because I've grown so many different varieties over the years but I think you know what I think a bog standard bottom up if that was the only thing I could grow I'd probably stick with a bog standard bottom up I know that you know they grow well here they store well some of the sort of different fancy varieties I've tried are beautiful but they don't store as well so for instance that Gala Dessine which was the really warty one beautiful taste didn't store nearly as well <clears throat> I was having to use those up I would say within about three months of harvest harvesting them whereas the butternut I've had butternuts that are over a year old and they're fine so yeah squash was third on my list my fourth choice now I really hummed and hawed about this and again this will be interesting to see what other folks say folk who've got way more space than me may have a different choice folk who've got less space than me <sighs> I was thinking do I pick carrots because carrots are so useful for me and they store in the ground really easily do I pick the beautiful Cavolo Nero kale which grows really well for me here in the end I've chosen for number four onions the good old simple humble onion and the two varieties I grow I grow jet set for my whites and red baron for my reds now I know some people may say oh but onions are you know really cheaply available in the shops etc etc however I use an ooh, I would probably say I use an onion with almost every single meal I make. Um, my onions are organic, obviously. I know exactly how they've been grown and what's been added to them, which is pretty much nothing. So yes, they are readily available from the shops. But then so is every veg. You could say that about any veg in the garden. Why would I grow tomatoes? You can buy them in the shops. The point is I know that those four things I've mentioned, beans, tomatoes, squash, onions, are all things I use on an almost daily basis. So to be able to put my hand out and grab one of my own that I've grown and that's stored really well, brilliant. Saves me going to the shops. So yes, definitely onions are on there for me. They, f <clears throat> they add flavour to everything. And they store really well. I've still got a few reds here. I've got a basket of whites over there. I've got some more hanging up there. <laughs> got a couple of lots hanging over there and some at home. They store really well for me. I use them all the time. Why would I want to go to the shops and spend money to buy them? So there we go. That's four. And they're all veggies. My fifth choice is actually not a vegetable at all. I reckon you can guess what it is. It's a flower. Mm. It's calendula. So I love the calendula in the garden anyway. They're such a beautiful, bright splash of colour. They attract pollinators. The insects love them. But one of the reasons I've put it in my top five is because I use masses of them, as I'm sure you all know by now, <clears throat> for my cosmetics, whether it's oil or balm. It's pretty much the only thing I put on my skin yeah it's the only thing I put on my skin is either calendula oil or calendula balm so if you think 
throughout the course of a year how much money I save by not buying these kind of lotions and things from the shops because I make all of my own. Of course I have to buy some of the ingredients, the almond oil, coconut oil, <clears throat> but essentially I'm saving myself a heap of money by making my own products. I know that they're 100% organic, I know that there's, yeah, there's not, there's nothing nasty goes into them, they're m such, such simple products, <clears throat> they suit my skin, I love them, so calendula is definitely in my top five. I've got four things which keep my belly happy, and the fifth thing keeps my outside happy. So yay, that's my top five must grow seeds, plants. <laughs> I can't wait to get growing this year. Mm. Now for my nominations. So I've decided I'm going to tag, you know that I watch all three of these guys anyway, but I just thought they'll be I've chosen them for different reasons. So, my first tag is Cliff at Castle Hill Gardens. Hey Cliff! Um, so, I I don't think Cliff's vegetarian. I'm, I'm pretty sure you're not, are you Cliff? So I thought it'd be really interesting on two counts to find out what Cliff's got to say because one, he's using his veg as a sort of side dish to his meats. So, is that going to make it really, you know, his, his choice is going to be much more different to mine as a vegetarian. But secondly, my goodness, Cliff has been growing things for years and years and years and years and years. And it'll be really interesting to know if over the years, you know, fashions change, don't they? Even gardens have fashions. So I'm just wondering with all those years and years of experience, if he can actually nail it down to his top five seeds to grow. And what they'll be. So I'm really interested to hear from Cliff his thoughts on that. Um, secondly, I'm going to no nominate Richard and Paul because I love them. Um, and again, it's going to be interesting because we both live in London, but we live on the opposite sides of London. So in theory, our climates should be very similar. Our soils ought to be quite similar. We're all London clay. But I'm interested to know if they're, what the difference, if they will choose differently to me because of slight sort of micro climate, micro environment changes in their plot compared to mine, but also because they're both vegetarian as well, will their choices be similar to mine because we're making similar foods? I don't know. Um, and also there are some vegetables I just don't like, sweet corn. I know, I'm weird, I don't like sweet corn. So, you know, I'm sure some people will be mentioning sweet corn. In fact, I think jazz, I think sweet corn was jazz's first choice. I may be wrong. And then my last tag is for Jane at Jane's Allotment. Hey Jane. Um, so this is gonna be an interesting one this year because now Jane's moved to a new plot and it's much bigger, or it, to me, it looks much bigger. So is that going to influence what her top five will be? Um, will they be five things that she's sort of done over and over and over again over the years and knows she can rely on? Will it be things which she's only tried recently? Will it make a difference having more space to her choices? We'll have to wait and see, won't we? Until those lovely three people, lots of people, get back to us with their top five videos. Right, well. <sighs> Breath. It's a gorgeous day out there, but it's going to get horrid in about an hour. So, I think I'm going to go and join the party outside for ten minutes, and then I'm going to scuttle off home quickly before the next, I think it's the very last dregs of Storm Gareth uh, hit this afternoon. And all being well, from tomorrow, the weather should be more settled so I can get back to the garden and actually doing some work. So, like I said, this was just a quick little catch up today to check for storm damage and see how the garden's looking and to do my top five seeds. So, <sighs> right, it's time for me to say cheerio to you all. Stay well, everyone. And oh my goodness, I hope, I hope, 
most of you haven't had horrific damage and I hope where you have had damage it's easily rectifiable. Oh, fingers crossed. So, until next time, take care of yourselves everyone and get outside and have some fun if you can.